Hey, what's up, viewers? This is Josh with Bright Mediums, and welcome back. Today, we'll be listing the elements in the periodic table using a table view. By building this basic list of elements, you'll gain a better understanding of data types like arrays and dictionaries, working with table views in Interface Builder, and even building table view cells from scratch. Okay, let's get started. Open Xcode and create a new project. We will start with a single view app, just like last episode. And name it Elements. And let's jump right into the storyboard. This view controller is not going to cut it, so let's delete it and filter down here for table and grab a table view controller and drag it into the project. Make sure we mark it as the initial view controller. Let's also delete the generic view controller class. And now let's create a new one. New file, Cocoa Touch class. Make sure it's a subclass of UI table view controller and let's name it element list table view controller. Now go back to the storyboard and assign that new controller to our new view. Let's go ahead and run the app just to see what we have so far. Should be an empty table view. Okay, good. Now we need some basic data. So let's add a property to the element list table view controller. Call it elements. Each item in the array will be a simple string for now and we'll preload it with hydrogen, helium, and lithium, the first three elements. Now we need to implement at least three functions to make a table view. Number of sections is one in this app. Number of rows in section will be the count of the elements. Finally, we need to define how to display the data in a cell for row. Each item in a list is a cell. In order to create a cell, we need a key to dequeue or instantiate. Let's go with element cell and we will copy this key over to the storyboard. Select the cell, go to this fourth inspector tab and paste the key in. While we're in here, change the style to basic, which exposes a label. Save it and go back to the controller. Cell for row is called once for each row based on what you entered in number of rows in section. Each time it's called, it will pass an index path to help us configure the cell. An index path has a section and it has a row. We will ignore the section for now and use the row to index into our array of elements. Now let's use the element to set the text on the text label. Let's run the app and check our progress. Good, we're moving in the right direction, so let's keep going. Let's add the atomic symbol as another string value. First, let's modify the data. The atoms in the array need to get a little more complex now. They need to store multiple strings for each item instead of just one, so we'll make these items dictionaries instead. Dictionaries have keys and values to make the data easier to read and access. Here, each element has a key for a symbol and a key for a name, which stores the respective value. Now we'll go back to the storyboard, select the cell again, and this time change the style to left detail, which gives us another label. Back in the code, we will update this. Our element object is no longer just a string, it's a dictionary, so we have to get the symbol out of it. We will also add the name to the detail text label, which was provided by changing the cell style to left detail. And let's run the app again. Great, now we're displaying the dictionaries in two labels, but we'd like to add the atomic weight. Let's check out our data again. We don't have the atomic weight, so I'm gonna find it using a Google search and then extract what we need using the terminal. I'll make sure to post this below the video so you don't have to do this. Now we have a weight key. Let's look at cell for row again. Hmm, it looks like we've run out of labels again. I think it's time to go fully custom on this. So change the cell style again to custom. We'll need to explicitly set the cell height in two places, no less. 64 pixels here, copy that, 
and go back into the controller, we need to implement another method. Using autocomplete type height four, hit enter, and don't forget to add the override keyword, Xcode forgot. Now let's go add our labels. When you go with custom cells, you have to add everything by hand. We need three labels, one for symbol, one for name, and one for atomic weight. Let's bump up the font sizes to 26, and we'll set the weight of name and weight to thin. Now we need to set the constraints. I'm not gonna walk you through this because it's a little advanced and you can skip it for now. We'll address it in a later episode. Now we need a subclass UI table view cell, right click new file, hook a touch class, make sure the subclass is a UI table view cell and name it element table view cell. We need storyboard and the table view cell file open side by side, and this is how I do that. So we can add referencing outlets like this. We're connecting the labels to the element table view cell we just created. Symbol label. Name label. And weight label. Whoops, I just connected that to the name label. I gotta disconnect it, add a new one. Work with me, Xcode, thank you. And now I need to fix the name label because that got removed. Okay, back in good old cell for row. Delete these. We're gonna move this into the new view. So delete these labels. We also need to cast the cell as an element table view cell. So do add as exclamation point element table view cell here. Now we're dealing with an element table view cell and we're just gonna pass the element to the cell and the cell is going to take it like this. So we're back in the element table view cell Add a property for element. And we're going to add these curly brackets so that we can add an observer called did set. So whenever this property is set, we're going to run this code and set the label properties here, set the label text here. Now run the app again. And now we have all three attributes displaying. This is great. Real quick, let's just add the rest of the atomic elements so the list doesn't look so pathetic. Great, now we have them all. Run the app one final time. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, feel free to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching and see you next time.